I asked you what you thought the world's most common health issue was, what would you say? Diabetes? Heart disease? Not minding your own business? Well, those are all pretty valid responses, especially that last one. But it's actually none of those. According to the World Health Organization, over 40% of the world's population suffer from none other than iron deficiency. Yup, that's right. The world's most prevalent threat to your health is not, in fact, Greg's undercooked, under-seasoned chicken from the work barbecue. Nope. It's iron deficiency. Now, trichological research has also found that iron deficiencies are one of the most common, if not the most common cause of hair loss and stunted hair growth, especially in women. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the possibility that an iron deficiency could be the silent enemy to your hair growth and how to identify if you are suffering from any of its symptoms. Listen, listen, listen. If you're still here and you haven't subscribed yet, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy, okay? Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my uploads. But before we get into it, guys, I just wanna make a quick disclaimer. This video is strictly for informative and not self-diagnosing purposes. If you are concerned that you might be suffering from a hair and or scalp condition, please contact a trichologist in your area and you can see the directory in the description box below to find a trichologist in your area. Right, let's get to it. So iron is one of the body's most essential minerals. It combines with proteins to basically create hemoglobin in red blood cells that carries all the oxygen around your body and all of the nutrients that your body needs. So safe to say, it's pretty important. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be talking about iron deficiency strictly in the terms of ferritin, which are otherwise known as your iron stores. So if you consider your typical iron or your standard iron to be your fridge, and ferritin, your iron stores, to be your deep freezer. So basically, whenever you are depleted of resources in your fridge, you would go to your deep freezer to then transfer more resources to your fridge. And that's basically the relationship between your ferritin and your iron. Now, according to the NHS, and probably most doctors, the healthy range for your ferritin levels would fall anywhere in between 12 nanograms per milliliter all the way up to 150 nanograms per milliliter. However, trichological research has actually shown that it is possible for somebody to fall perfectly within the healthy range for ferritin levels, but still have ferritin levels that are low enough for them to be suffering from hair loss or stunted hair growth. Now, the reason for this is pretty simple, but flow with me, guys. So each and every single one of your individual hairs on your head goes through an individual hair growth cycle. Now, the first and longest and most important phase of that hair growth cycle is the first phase, which is called the anagen phase. Now, this phase typically lasts for about two to seven years, so let's say an average of five years. And in this phase, your hair is growing. So if we say for an average of five years, your hair is growing, after which it's followed by two to three more phases in which the hair will go through a resting phase and then a shedding phase in preparation for the new hair. Now these last resting and shedding phases only last about a total of three and a half months. So the most important phase, the phase that we are actually interested in is the growing phase. Now, you will typically be able to find ferritin stored inside the hair follicle, which is where the hair grows from. So typically you will find that when somebody has sufficient ferritin levels in their system, this will maximize the length of their anagen growth phase. However, because your hair isn't considered a vital organ, your body doesn't recognize hair as something that is a necessity for your, your general health and your survival. When your body is in need of iron for its essential functions and it's low on iron, what is it going to do? It's going to start looking for your iron stores, your ferritin stores. And so because your hair isn't considered a vital organ, your body will then go to the ferritin levels in your less vital organs. For example, the ferritin that can be stored in your follicles and it will take the iron from there in order for it to complete its more essential bodily functions. Are you following me? Are you with me? Okay. And so as you can imagine, if sufficient ferritin means that your growth phase is maximized, 
then insufficient ferritin would mean that your growth phase is significantly reduced. Now, in addition to the anagen growth phase being shortened, what will also happen with insufficient ferritin levels um, is that the quality of the hair that actually then does grow will be inferior in terms of appearance, in terms of thickness, the actual individual strands will, will tend to grow finer and they would also come out looking a little bit duller. So this is why from a trichological point of view, it's actually recommended that instead of your ferritin levels being as low as 12 nanograms per milliliter, it's recommended that your ferritin levels don't drop below a minimum of 17 nanograms per milliliter. This means that in an event when your body is desperately seeking for iron from your iron stores, there would be sufficient iron within those stores to cater to your body's vital essential functions with enough left over to still benefit your hair growth and the quality of your hair. So I'm gonna give you three signs that you can probably find in your hair as an indication that you might be suffering from an iron deficiency. The first is thinning hair. If you've noticed that over time your hair, um, say maybe when you put it in a ponytail, um, or just generally just looks thinner than it used to be, then you might be suffering from an iron deficiency. Second thing is if your hair is looking like it's getting duller in color, like your natural hair color isn't as vibrant as it used to be, then you might also be suffering from an iron deficiency. The third and final thing, which is probably the most obvious indication that you might be struggling from an iron deficiency is excessive hair loss. Now typically you would lose or naturally rather you would lose about 80 to 100 hairs per day naturally. Those are the hairs that are in the shedding phase, um, getting ready for new hair growth. But you personally know your hair. If you are experiencing more hair shedding than you have typically been used to in the past, then that might also be an indication of an iron deficiency. But here's the good news. Iron deficiency hair loss or stunted growth is actually pretty easy to correct with the appropriate nutritional therapy. So remember, if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, be sure to contact your trichologist, your GP, or your dermatologist. And if you're not sure if or where you can find one in your local area, I put the link in the description box again for you to make sure that you get an accurate diagnosis and an appropriate treatment plan to reverse the hair loss and to boost your hair growth. Now in some of my next videos, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how you can up your iron stores so that you can maximize your hair growth potential. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week Thursday. Bye. And as for the rest of you that keep telling Greg, Sally, no one asked for your opinion, yeah? So you, you basically sprinkle like a bit of water on it, um, and then you just add like a little sprinkle of like paprika, just like a little, yeah, it's just, it's what gives it that rich kick, you know? Yeah, yeah, I haven't tried that, have I? Yeah, so you put any salt in it? No, 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 no. You know, the paprika does like all the work. Paprika is not a substitute salt. You know what? Neither is saffron, neither is coriander, neither is thyme.